I think we should be live. Let me turn off music here. Let me know if there's a lot of background hum from my AC. I can't turn that off. Um, we are doing some live benchmarking here, live encoding. So what I'm doing here in that top corner is I am doing Adobe. And I'm going to test Vegaverse 1080 versus like RX 550 to see if it really matters doing what I do if there's literally any difference or not when it comes to encoding times. So we're using CUDA Acceleration and um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, OpenGL. So that's kind of what we're, we're doing today. We are most of the way done. I do have a timer running here. So let me get logged into YouTube real quick. So I can monitor stream. Looks like I'm already logged in. Let me see how close we are to finishing here. Most of the way I have a minute or two left. Live stream. Should be live. I am live. So we're going to go take a quick look here. more time I got. I'm getting close here so I'm actually going to move over there near the camera. Oh nope we still have about 20% to go. So we're getting there. Uh, let me tell you guys where the timer's at. We're at six minutes. So not too shabby. I'm getting closer, so I'm actually going to move over there. So this this test is with RX Vega. So I have that on a Ryzen 7, 1700, overclocked to 3.9, 1.425 volts, 2400 megahertz of DDR4 3200 uh, Corsair LPX. As you guys know, I love my LPX memory. So it's going pretty good. Good luck. Let me get the fly in here. Let's see where our percentages are at. Ninety-three. Okay, I'm going to have to stick over there and listen and watch it here for a second, and we're going to see what our time's at. Turn this around so you guys can. Okay, 10 minute video. We are at 7 minutes 25 seconds. That's with RX Vega. 10 minutes on the dot. So, we're going to input that into Excel here. What the heck am I doing here? Okay, let's open up our look. Looks, I don't have Excel on here. Shit. Okay, let's screenshot this. And if I can get this screenshotted decently, maybe. Nope, didn't screenshot right. There, got it that time. Yep. We're going to call this Vars GTX 1080. So that's what this is all about. Okay, so that is done. I'm near the camera. Let's go ahead and make this bigger. So you guys can see here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down that computer and switch over to my 1080. Um, let me grab permission from the boss real quick. Hey babe, 
I'll put it back. Why? Bam on live streaming. Okay. Great news, guys. She's let me borrow her 1080. So, let's fire this baby down here. Zoom out a little bit so you guys can see an awesome video of me here. So, I'm going to take out her 1080 real quick. I'll let you guys see what I see for now. So, the reason why I want to do my taste is because mine's water cold, so it's a bit of a pain to mess with. So, let's grab my trusty screwdriver if I can find it. That's not my bachelor party, by the way. Yes, that is how dedicated it is. My bachelor party was tonight, and I'm here making a video for you guys. That's unfortunate. Yeah, sorry, my bachelor party was tonight, so I'm really late to get to it. Actually, is it the game? Actually, I'll turn it on. Okay. So this will only take a minute to get installed. I'm going to leave the side panel off for the duration of this. The other thing I'm not going to be able to test is the GTX 1060. Unfortunately, I am streaming <laughs> from the computer the 1060 is in, so that's not going to be Broadcasting 
even though I have the sound muted. Sound, flash of volume. That should be a fair bit better. I thought you guys were picking up throughout my speakers, but add for what? Okay. Okay, so that is up and running. Is it better? I can't tell. Okay. Yeah, it's an, it's a hi YouTube's. It's an ad on your stream. Oh no, that's the camera that's doing that. There it goes. Hey. Okay. It's fixed. The camera keeps showing ads for some reason. Here's what I'm doing. I'm going to throw this in here. Look, throw the memory card in there. All right, we are overclocked again as per the last one. Uh, let's open up. Yes, we have EVGA Precision. We we'll open up HW Monitor as well. And we'll open up Adobe. So I'll make sure that this is overclocked to the same level that Vega was. And apply. Make sure we're not overheating or anything, obviously. So this is going to be. Encoding KCX 1080. We want to make sure the CUDA is enabled. So I'm actually going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing here. See if I can stay out of the way for the most part. So you want to make sure CUDA acceleration is enabled. So we hit OK. And then I'm going to go to editing. I'm going to drag and drop this video here, um, and then I'm put this at the end here. Change this to a ten flat. Cut. Drop. And then we're going to export media, and then preset type is going to be YouTube 1080p. And then I'm going to grab my phone here. You're still what? It's still broadcasting this app. What do you mean? I hear the thunder on the Ah, show me. Here, problem solved. I just disabled the sound altogether. Okay. Uh, okay. We're going to reset our timer and hit go. So, back over to the computer for a little bit here. Make this a little bit smaller. Good there. Uh, okay, let me re-enable sound here. Okay, <clears throat> so now you guys should be able to see my monitor in the background as it's going. So the only one I'm not going to do on camera is I'm not going to do the GTX 1060 because I have to stop the stream. But I'm going to be doing an RX 550 and the 1060 as well. Um, so... I did a, a video here with this CPU cooler, so I'm going to switch, I'm going to add a new uh, display capture, this two, we'll go to the 1080p monitor, good. Okay, so then we'll still so keep that up there. So this is interesting, so I have this thing overclocked to I think 3.5 or 3.6. Uh, and it seemed like 1.4 volts. I got a, that's just the default overclock. But this um, 120 millimeter AIO is doing really well. 
Somebody did say they had a leaking problem on Reddit with it. That's one so far. Obviously, I can't really attribute to how true that is or not. I presume they wouldn't lie about that. But um, food for thought, it, it is uh, performing very well for 40 bucks. Um not sure how good their warranty is, say, like if it leaks or anything like that. And I'm getting messages, but I'll deal with that later. This thing is not live stream as well. Man, is this uh, different than what I'm used to. My RX Vega with FreeSync was hitting like 100 plus FPS. Granted, I am live streaming, so I'm just going to keep that in mind. But... Okay, let's check on... About halfway done, give or take. To the next world quest. I'm actually going to go out and say that I don't think it's a CPU pulling it down. I am approximately maybe half power, give or take. So I'm not really low on power there. Um, I'm probably going to say... See, even even the graphics card's not 100%. I don't know why it's so low. I mean, I guess I'm I, ever since I had FreeSync turned on... I, I've been consistently getting north of 100 just about everywhere, and it, it's not much bouncing around, so I think I'm feeling a drastic um, change in frame rate is probably what I'm, I'm feeling, and it just feels a lot slower because of it. I'll try to do this one real quick. up kingdom ride by the way i'm not sure if i give you a personal personal hello or not okay. um no she doesn't really have a lot of interest in that uh i've definitely have extended i mean she has a, a ryzen 7 you know 1700 gtx 1080 she does game but she doesn't have a lot of interest she'd rather me just deal with it so um, you know, I have extended the offer, but nope, for some reason she doesn't have a lot of interest in it, so I don't really force the issue. I have, um, so. I'll have a I'll have the actual full results. I'll give you guys a sneak peek of these two, uh, but I'll have the full results here shortly. Uh, but that'll be up in a video. I promised somebody I would do a video on Adobe with 1080p encoding, and uh, that's kind of where this is at. Um, I don't know what's coming up down the line. Oh, I know. Um, my buddy Andy Mellon, we're doing an unboxing overview of a CyberPower PC system, so that'll be pretty cool. Okay, let's see where we're at. We're at five minutes and 45 seconds. With approximately 20% to go, um, if you're good with math, that's going to pretty much put us at seven and a half minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's to be expected. Um, next run's going to be CPU only encoding and see how well that does. But I'm thinking that's going to definitely add some time here. Yeah, we've got about 14%, like I said, it's about a minute, and we're about 6 minutes and 20 seconds. So, definitely nothing super surprising. Uh, where'd you guys meet? You're so cute together. Okay, so where do we meet? We met on a website. Website was called eHarmony. 
Um, so yes, we did meet through that, and um, it was kind of interesting because she um, posted a photo of her and one of her uh, shipmates that she was in the Navy with, so it wasn't like, you know, just them goofing around, so it wasn't like, you know, your, your best photo up by any stretch. Uh, but I, I made a deal that I would look through every profile in order that came across my desk um, because I just felt that I would be maybe missing out on something important. So lo and behold, I get to her profile, and she says she likes the game. Now, I'm hoping she likes computer games. She was actually, unfortunately, a console peasant. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, I, I converted her. But uh, our first date was at the Cheesecake Factory, interestingly enough. Okay. So, before I continue this story, 7 minutes, 24 seconds. Dead on. Somebody wants to know about how we met, so I'll explain that story. <laughs> so. I met him at his dock. Nah. Hey, well, how about this? How about you go on the mic and, and tell, finish telling the story? Well, where'd you leave off? Oh, you can just start from the beginning. I didn't get too far into it. E-Harmony? Yeah. Eh. I'll leave it up to you. Nah. No, they, they actually want you on a stream for some reason. Who does? Um. Hey. Read the comments. I told Kingdom I was going away. <sighs> <sighs> Actually, here. Uh, I can't. Uh... You can just talk into the mic. It's live. Oh. <laughs> wow. DTD. Yes, Kingdom. Unfortunately, I am a console peasant. Um. So I had come home from the military. I had friends who were both getting engaged, you know, and everything like that. And here I am, just still a single person. So I thought, well, I'll try eHarmony and I'll try Match. Well, didn't really get anything on Match. eHarmony, eh, every now and then you get your weirdos. But um, one day I was at the uh, air show in Latrobe, and this guy emails me on match <laughs> um what are they saying olivia i'm gonna block well it's uh okay that's fine yeah i got the other one uh crackling i got the other one <laughs> girls are waiting for you that's uh that, that's kind of funny because um, my girl's right here. Six, seven weeks away. Yeah. Oh, continue. Um, so I uh, messaged him. We started talking, and he made the biggest mistake of his life. He gave me his cell phone number. <laughs> and Still regret that one. We just start talking, and we decided a week later we would go on a date. Now, ask him what I wore on a date. <laughs> so, what she wore on a date, normal people wear something nice. Nice pair of jeans, nice dress, <laughs> skirt. I mean, of course, that's not her, so that's, you know, obviously wasn't her. But um, this little bozo rolls up in a pair of blue sweatpants and a blue hoodie on a first date to the movies. By the way, I still have those blue sweatpants. I know you do. So, uh, we we sit down out, you know, outside the... And, you know, we're inside a theater, and we're sitting down outside the door because we're waiting, and we're actually going to see a movie called Maleficent. Yes, I do remember the first movie we saw. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just chat for probably about 20 minutes, half hour. We, we seem to click pretty well. Uh, I remember the movie quite well. It's actually a pretty good movie. Um, and, you know, I sent her a message saying, want to do this again? And I had several failed experiments on you, Harmony. Two or three girls based one out once, and basically we never spoke again. So she wanted to do it again, and I think that led to a third, I think, after the first day I met your parents, or second day? Second, I think. Yeah, because we're, we're not, yeah, I took you home to your grams. Yeah. And then the second date, I um, met your parents, I think, when I brought you home, because this little bozo relied on public transportation. Can I say, I didn't, didn't need a license. Didn't drive. Um, and uh, we made it official on June, th Friday. June 13th, Friday the 13th is our official 
date. Uh, the following day, I was having a graduation party for finishing college, um, which she did not attend that graduation party, by the way. Kind of a dick move, but it is what it is. I had other plans, and we had just started to date. Eh. So, you know, fast forward, you know, three years and two months. And Something like that. We're here. We have a nice, beautiful townhouse, 26 miles east of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We have three cars, a bunch of electronics, a fair bit of debt that I wish we didn't have, but we like our we like our electronics, so we make wait, it work. Wait, wait, wait. Why? Rephrase. Who has who who has likes their electronics? There's three thousand dollars right here. Just saying. <laughs> who bought it? Who's using it? Yeah, well, he, uh, Crackling said he met his first girlfriend on Friday the thirteenth. Yep. <laughs> And it's funny, Matt or uh, E Harmony wanted us to do an unpaid testimonial. Uh, we both looked at each other like, "Yeah, no, you gotta pay us." <laughs> yeah, so we actually fired up our E Harmony accounts about a year ago. Unfortunately, all the information was erased. We had to start over, but we obviously we got out of that because we, we weren't really looking. We just wanted to see our first interaction. So yeah, but after what a year, they delete them. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, whenever it goes inactive. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much how that went down. Um, you know, I, I got to say, you know, it was very troubling because I went through probably half a dozen dates, three in Harmony, and, you know, I did a lot of the wrong things. Um, I just found somebody who, you know, was just looking for a friendship at the time, and... We seemed to be pretty casual. We didn't have a lot of expectations going into it, I guess. And we were open. It all worked. It seems like when you try really hard, it doesn't work. As soon as you don't try, it works. So that that's my love advice for anybody. <laughs> um, you know, always keep your options open. Um, what are you doing? You're not typing anything. Yes, I am. Where? I don't see you typing. Where are you typing at? Uh, um, <laughs> keep your options open. Don't search too hard. It's going to happen. You Thank know, you, Kingdom. Uh, life seems to throw a lot of interesting things your way. A lot of, a lot of tough things. You, know, you guys uh, know, if you guys have followed me, my mom's battling cancer uh, for now coming up in five years. <laughs> um, you know, and you know, it really stinks when life throws a curveball like that. I mean... God, my mom wasn't supposed to make it six months. We're coming up on five years now in December. Um, but life generally throws stuff at you you can handle. You just got to be able to, to push through and do it. Um, and karma's a bitch. Let me tell you. Always live your life good. Have good intentions. Be a good person. Help other people out. Um, try not to be taken advantage of. But at the same time, don't use that as an excuse not to be a good person. Because if you're not a good person or if you have bad intentions... Karma's a bitch, and trust me, she will find you. I know I will. I said karma, not you. <laughs> How do you know I ain't karma? Uh, looks like this is going to end the exact same time. Interesting. So, GPU acceleration makes no sense. I've been straight CPU encoding on this one. So, what is going on with your wow here? Why can't I do anything? Oh, it's frozen. There you go. <laughs> Guys, I have no clue what I'm doing on WoW here. Oh, they're looking at the screen. Right? Mm -hmm. So they're not looking at me not knowing what I'm doing? Oh, no, they're looking... What you see in the corner is kind of what they're looking at. Except right that's here. muted, yeah. That and then that. B. Oh, can I kill him? Uh, stabby, is he red? No. Nah, you're in a PB zone. Stabby, stabby. Uh, he got slicey, slicey, but... Okay. So this is going to fall more or less the exact same time as the other <laughs> No, I just didn't write stabby, stabby. Yes, she did. Uh, hey, you got three people watching. Can you see who are watching? Participants. No. Alright guys. I'm gonna cut these results here and I'll show you why. So CPU only encoding. The chat went away. 728. 
So, what'd you do? Stare. Mm, you delete everything. Hey, crackling. Um, put something into the chat for me, so I know the chat's working. I, uh, uh, I guess I gotta give you a graphics card back. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna switch over to webcam here in a minute, once I'm done putting a graphics card back. Why? So they'll all see me. Well, I'm gonna take over your spot. I get my chair back? Yeah. Oh, guys, we're going to start a donation for uh, his, he needs another computer chair because so he can quit taking mine. So I use a lawn chair. It's been really sturdy despite all the cracks in it. Okay, so we're starting a donation for two chairs for him. Yeah. <laughs> um, if anyone wants to start, you know, maybe we'll start a GoFundMe. Get Feevin chairs. <laughs> oh, they don't know the Feevin story, do they? Uh, not, I don't actually know it myself. You're welcome to share that. So, this one one day goes, yeah, they sp I spell my name with a P uh, E V P H or not, whatever. I spelled the V, not a PH. Yeah, and I said, what, Feevin? So, like that. So that, now, if you, if you type that into Google, there's a pretty interesting meme that comes up. I don't know, can you put links? Um, you and Crackling can, nobody else can. Okay. Here. It feels weird. Normally, I'm used to, like, talking to people on TeamSpeak. If you're talking around strangers that could come and molest you? Yeah, well. That was really disappointing, that CPU encoding was the exact same timing. Oh, how do I copy a link? Was. Copy and link address. Mm. <laughs> okay, Cracklin knows the meme. <laughs> yeah, we make fun of him all the time for it. You spell with a PH, not, or a V, not a PH. Well, Feevin is special. Cracklin says, I just bought a... I just buy computer chairs on eBay, Facebook. Even if I go through a chair every two months, it's like 60 bucks a year on computer chairs. <laughs> nah, um... The biggest problem I have, unfortunately, is I, I'm working on it. I'm a bit overweight, and it causes the chairs to break. So I don't sing her chair too often because I'll break it. And then, you know, the whole you break it, you buy it. Well, let's buy it from Best Buy and get the GSP. Hey. For anybody that shops at Best Buy, if the GSP is not super expensive, you should buy it. Even if it is super expensive, you always should buy it. Uh-oh. What? What did he send me? <laughs> I, that's the exact one I was looking up to. Look. I saw. <laughs> Cracklin, you and I think the same way. I asked for a cell phone number. Is I going to have a phone? Cra really? Cracklin. Yeah. It's 2017. At least get a flip phone or something. Get an Obama phone or something. What? Obama's not in office, so that's not just anyone else. Oh. You, you got your. <laughs> ha ha. Kingdom says, sorry to break it to you, Steve, but Allie is the star of the stream. Mm. Hey, I'll be honest with you. If she can get some views, I'll bring her on all the time. I don't care. The only thing is, is like, if we start doing stuff outside of gaming and tech, we have to make a different channel. That's the only downside. But. <sighs> I have a phone. I just don't have the service. Ew. Because like, I was willing to give my number. I don't care. Well. There's, man, man, there's a lot of people that have my number that probably shouldn't. I'm slightly biased. Go with Verizon. Um, babe. Okay. So, RX 550, the beast of a graphics card. It's going in hot. 80 bucks, brand new, shipped to your door. Not even. Hey, what's this green butterfly thing do? Where? I don't you know. Where? This one here. That's just a buff. Oh. Mm -hmm. He says Metro PCS. If it has service, it's great, but... I know in the art area they don't have good service. Yeah, if you're in our area, you don't have service. Hey, Warpri says anyone help? Where at? Wow. I'm not worried about that. I don't know, I'm just running around in circles. Hey, I bent the bracket. Can you oh. not break things? Oh. What's up? I think they, oh no, okay. Are they watching me? 
We're gonna call this. That's so. really far behind. Um, Free says, anyone help? Oh yeah, they are yeah. watching me run around in wow. circles. Yeah, I'm not gonna that. Sorry guys. Run circles. Amazon what? They can, yeah, they see what's on the screen. Um, if anybody attacks you, can one, you not three, break four things? do a lot of damage. And oh. Two does damage. So, I oh. Think they, oh, no, okay. No. Are they watching me? I, I don't like that. We're going to call. You annoy me sometimes. Well, guess what? He's a dog growing. <laughs> what did he say? Kingdom that is not the hot girl link. Sorry. <laughs> we banned her. <laughs> You know I get those on Instagram all the time? What? It's like hot girl, fine, like, it's like hot girl's hair, and then like you click on it, and it's like a gif of a girl. You don't even watch girl no action, do you? No. Oh god, I'm gonna, my channel's gonna get banned from that shit. <laughs> uh, you'll just get age restricted. Oh well. It's not like you can get any super cash anyway. Not yet, I'm getting there though. Ooh, that driver's not installed. Can you tell me? Nope, not yet. I'm watching the stream. If anyone... There we go. Oh, okay. he's dropping in your... He's dropping Amazon affiliate links in the stream for products you mentioned. Um, if anyone has issues with motion sickness, let me know. Oh. Yeah, babe. Install that graphic, that, that, that driver. It looks like it's installed. It is. Now. Why the hell is that running so fast? I'm trying to get this. Run 26 for good I Make sure he, I mean, I presume he's dropping links for me. <laughs> um, so something cool that Amazon does, I'm, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but when you guys click on a link that I have, that I put below, even if you don't buy the product, but in that session you purchase something, Amazon gives me a percentage finder fee. Depends on the, the um, uh, clock. Like books get the most. Computer tech doesn't get the most, most so, expensive one. Ooh, oh, that's a ten so fifty. It, it it goes to me. I'll be honest. Oh, why is this running a hundred percent? Uh, I'm Kingdom, you gotta help us. Well, more him. He said he has no idea how your channel hasn't exploded yet. He loves your content. Um, I, I can tell you why. This market's kind of saturated. So, the problem is, is there's a lot of people that do what I do more commercially than I do. Um, Someone's humble. So... For example, you know, you have Linus, right? So Linus is probably one of the biggest tech people in the space. Now, the thing is, is he's going a little bit of a different route. So he likes the more commercially done stuff. So Linus is basically a rich version of me, essentially. It's a good way of putting it, which is if I had, I don't want to say rich. So he worked hard to get kind of where it's at, and because he's very successful, he does crazy stuff. He buys and does the craziest projects. He's a tech enthusiast. He's not like a video reviewer. You know, Jay and um, you know Austin, um, Kyle, Paul. You know, they do great work. They are reviewers. They review products. Um, you know, not to say that you know Linus' videos are better, but he he gets to do it like kind of. He gets to do what he wants, where he wants, and how he wants because he has. The, the industry backing he has, the sponsorships, you know, hosting LTX with a thousand people in a stadium doing case tosses. Like, he's able to do cool stuff like that. And, and, and that's because, you know, he likes, he, he just, he likes to be a crazy tech person. Um, so, but he even said he was going to get the round. Um, so, but, you know, I, I feel like I have my point of view, which is a little bit different than everybody else's. Um, and while my point of view is not necessarily the right one, it's different. Um, it's based off of my experiences. I may go against the grain, I may go for the grain. It can vary. Oops, I have no idea if I selected the right thing or not. It'll be... 
uh, Cracklin said, once you hit uh once you hit a thousand, ten thousand is easier. Until ten thousand, though, it's quite slow. Kingdom said no is because they hate on us. Pittsburgh is a net black and yellowish for life. Yella. <laughs> hey, don't be knocking my Pittsburghies. He makes fun for for all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. How did I end up on this stream? Just out of curiosity. Lazy. Yeah, well, at least you admit it. Okay, drop, export. No. Toggle timestamps. Toggle timestamps. What are you doing? I don't know. Playing with the settings. And Papa chat. Ha! It's like going to be the exact same overall time. There's a shocker. I just want my tape on there. I was just walking in to Do go I get grab my channel back or now? I don't know, guys. Do you think I should give him the channel back? Oh, hey, babe. I feel scabby. Nah. That's going to be a resounding no. I don't know. We haven't seen yet. They haven't caught up to it. They're like 30, minutes, 30 seconds behind. 30 minutes, yeah. Can you check temperatures for me real quick once you're done with that? It's already open. Red one. Uh, package under CPU. <laughs> Kingdom says no. Uh, go up. Uh, wow, that stopped at 60 degrees. That's impressive. This one? Yeah. Alright, you, you want to pull your chair up next to me? No. Babe. I'll, I... I'll let you stay on the stream, I just want to play. <sighs> I guess. I was coming to get a towel to take a shower, but alrighty now. Why didn't, you take, didn't you take a shower last night? I put products in my... Well, yeah, but... You only take like three showers a week, I thought. Shut up, are you? <laughs> Why don't you pull... Babe. You pulled the chat out. I had to put it back. Exactly. You have a problem with that? Mm-hmm. Oh, did they get to see your ugly mug again? No. <laughs> Come on, I was monitoring the chat. <laughs> well, I put the chat back and erased it. All right, so I'm still here. I'm just chatting as me now because he took over the PC Budget Solutions tag. So I'll answer. So I'm thinking about pairing up the... Uh, That's G why it rained today. Why? Because you were thinking. You're funny. Actually, no, you think you're funny. You're not actually funny. I <laughs> Um... Yeah, see that. So that's the thing. Like, I will never sell a computer without an IO shield. People do it all the time. I, I hate it because just you can get really unlucky. We'll put it that way. Shut up. What? So, you know why there's an IO shield? Wait, what? Do you know why the IO shield exists? Uh, hey, Cracklin, help me out on this one. Uh, Kingdom City's gonna grab something and he'll be right back. Tell me to say he's not allowed. IO shield, input output shield. It goes over the ports in the back. Um, helps ground it and prevents uh, discharge onto the user. Sure, what he said. And the problem is, is people... We'll be like, oh no, it's no big deal. Yeah, wait till you sell a computer on Craigslist and somebody gets electrocuted to death. <laughs> oh, by the way, Rob said we need to banish you to the basement once we finish the basement. Why me? Keeps the animals out and keeps you from shorting bits on the motor. Why you? Yeah. So you can have your own studio down there and I can have the media room to myself. No, because we're going to flip this into a... Uh, 
Whatchamacallit pretty soon. That's about what? A bedroom for our kids. <laughs> for the corgis? Yeah, sure. Uh, Crackling, I finally got my, um, not finally, I got my third artifact relic for, um, my death knight. Can you check to see how close that is to finishing? If you just want to turn around. Don't you have it on the screen there? I can't actually see because it's on high enough definition. <gasps> One What's the percentage? I don't know. Well, it tells you that. 56. Thank you. Jesus, is it that kind of fart? Yes. I've got a fart. We should play cards against humanity on this channel. Not on this channel. It's, it's not what it's been for. So? Did you just do what I think you just did? What do you think I just did? Did you just crisen that chair? Darn it! I wasn't close enough. You're not answering. That that that, that chair has been beyond christened. What's he saying? Well, the thing is with that is, I mean, I haven't done recent testing, but the Hyper 212 did not do a good job with early rising, so that's something I would like to test. Not now, but in the near future. I actually have a two hyper two twelve. I just need a mountain, to be honest. Hey, what? I can do your video in VR. Okay. <laughs> you don't have much VR on there. No, but I do have cardboard. Weirdo. <laughs> Sorry. I work in the tech retail field. Oh wow. Hmm. You need to change the pool on your uh, video. Mm -hmm. What should you, what would you like us to stream next? Wow, Watch Dogs 2, Battle for One, or GTA 5? Wait, I'm lost. What are you talking about? Your pull. In the battle. When did I do that? Ah, uh, whenever you did building a gaming PC for less than $300, episode 1. Whoops. What are you doing? He's breaking thing got things guys. Told you that. No I'm not. He's breaking it. Hush. I will silence you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no silence in me. Meh. Okay, so this one's actually gonna be worse. And I'm gonna redo some view encoding one more time on this. We have a minute over a minute left and it's already gone seven minutes. So Mm. Ow! You're in the way. Um, How is there not an echo? Why would there be? Because I'm running three microphones. What three are you running? This one, that one, and that one. You gonna go get a shower soon? No. <sighs> what? He wants me to come onto the stream. I got bored with you. What are you doing? Since you won't turn around time percentage, I'm checking. <laughs> so, Jacob Brown, I'll answer that. Move a little bit so I don't hit you. I will answer that one second. I just want to check the timing on here. Alright, let me get the final time here, start the next one, and then I'll be able to answer said question for you. Hey, Cracklin, can you take care of that for me? I can't do it on mobile. What? Block. Who do we need to block? Never mind. Uh, Cracklin, I got it. Thank you. So the RX 550, about a full second slower. Down. 
error file okay have that run okay Jacob Brown to answer your question this system is current oh, why did you close that each time monitor whoops this system is actually running it right now so let me move up my display real quick so you can see what I'm looking at so while streaming wow 48 degrees Celsius Ivan's on okay uh, I have a modest overclock, 3.5 gigahertz, but it's at 1.4 volts. That's the auto setup. I could definitely crank to 3.8. And I'm, I'm honestly, outside of actual, like, Ida 64, you won't really clear 70 for the most part. Oh, so, I have to walk in front of the camera. you're fine. It's just a small piece. Bye, so, YouTubes. so I, I, so here's the only thing is I don't know what the reliability is of the um, Cooler Master Master Liquid Light 120. They're having, you know, somebody did say, hey, I had one and it uh, it failed. So, I mean, that's a really small sample size, but, you know, you can take her for what it's worth. But in raw cooling performance, it'll do better than most, probably any power cooler in its price range. So anything like $50 or less. However, like if you're talking like Noctua NHD 15, Be Quiet Docker Pro 3, it's not gonna do better. You're pretty much dull radiator level at that point. So my take is, is depending on which kind of case you have. So let me ask you this, Jacob, what kind of case do you have? Um, and what kind of CPU and what are your expectations uh, for overclocking temperatures and things of that nature? I can probably give you some suggestions. <laughs> Excuse me, some suggestions. For those of you that don't uh, follow my stream very often, I know this is um, Adobe Running Earth plus building advice. So, I'm one guy that has built several hundred computers, have tested a lot of components, um, who has a, a, my own view of you know what's good and what's not. And I have my own reasons, just like everybody else does. I always tell people, you should talk to people who know their stuff, not, um, not you know, <laughs> your IT friend. So th this will make uh, Shadow Hatch laugh. You know, you come to Best Buy to buy a laptop, and your your IT friend says, "No, just get the, you know, Chrome or not the Chromebook, but the netbook, right?" So those people, I don't. Those are not people you should consult. They're not people who are working with this stuff every day. Um, people like Linus, people like um, you know, Jay, Kyle, Paul, um, you know, those guys. Those guys and myself, and there's a lot of other small guys like me. We work with stuff every day. We all have our own likes and dislikes. Um, coming on my stream, I will be more than happy to give you my opinions. And I'll back them up with, with, with reason. You know, why do I feel that way? Have I tested it? Um, you know, I try to keep everything unbiased. So, for example, I went from an RX Vega, or a GTX 1080 to an RX Vega. I would not recommend anyone on my stream to do that. I'm not getting rid of the RX Vega. I'm keeping it. I have my own reasons, but right now, given the thermals, given the high power output, given the lack of added board parts, given the lack of the employee, the higher pricing, not worth buying at all. Um, if you're an AMD person or if you have FreeSync like me, that's why I did it, because FreeSync is awesome, absolutely awesome. So uh, I try to keep it as unbiased and as true as possible. So yeah 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 Rob that that's that's true and, and that's what I, that's what I hate where where you know your IT guy is not me just like you're not going to come to me with programming questions or software questions I don't I don't work with that stuff I I know people that do so I can refer you to them but if they're your IT guy he might have basic information 
but there's a really good chance he doesn't know all that much, and he could steer you in the wrong direction. Um, you know, for example, um, somebody that, that um, Shadow works with. Um, hold on a second. Oh, shit. Sorry about that, she stuffed in my keys and set my alarm off to my car. Okay. Okay. Phenom X4 Black Edition Light Overclock, 3.5 gigahertz. Um, so, I haven't overclocked Phenom a lot. So I'm, I'm gonna lead, start with that. I mean, overclocking is no different on Phenom than anything else. You mess with voltage, main north bridge, stuff like that. I don't know. Let me see here. Phenom two two X four black edition TDP. I don't know what the maximum uh, thermal output on those are is. So. Um, let me look up your case here. So if, depending on what you're using right now, so that's the first question, um, and depending on what kind of room you have. So if you only have a 120 in the top, um, I would probably go with an AIO either like if you want to keep it cost effective the one that i got honestly is pretty solid if you wanted to go um wait, where am i going here if you want to go some a little bit higher end go with like an h80 or actually no, crack an nzxt crack in uh x uh 42 or x41 those are 120 140 millimeter aio is very good um that's definitely a route that you could go um, and if you can do dual radiator, uh, H100i, uh, NCXT crack, and X52 and X62, that is 24280 respectively. Very good options as well. I'll be 100% honest, I'm not a big fan of tower forwards anymore. Like heavy ones. Because, so, um, let me leave that here. You know, the Hyper 212 by Kohler Master. Uh, it's about as big as I would get. Anything bigger gets heavier, and it puts a lot of, I mean, it's stress on the mother. And I'm just, I'm, I'm not a huge fan, person. I'm, I'm, I'm not. So I think if you want high-end coin, if you're going to spend that kind of money, then I would definitely go, by the way, this is something I need to do research on. It looks like CPU encoding is it, even though I'm using GPU acceleration, they're identical. Ugh. Anyway, um, yeah. So, so go back to this thing. Um, you know, it, it's the. I guess the, some of the other questions I'd have to ask you before I really send you a good recommendation is your board. So. You know, first of all, can your board handle 40 gigahertz overclock? It, you know, does it have good VRM? How's the power delivery? How's the VRM cooling? Because that's the one thing with AIO that you're not going to get is you're not going to get any VRM cooling. It's going to have to be passive. So that's one advantage with the bigger tower cooler. Now, I would probably go to say $45 or less. This AIO is probably going to perform better than most tower coolers available. And the other thing is, is do you have the clearance for a high tower cooler anyhow? So a Hyper 212, I believe is 159 millimeters tall. So you need 160 millimeters of clearance. And there's a lot of cases out there that don't support that. So that's definitely something to consider um, if you want to go to the tower cooler. 
Um, this one's, I mean, here's the thing. So I'm pushing out. I'll show you here. Uh, under load, I'm pushing out around 105, 110 watts under full load. Under gaming, I'm not pushing out that far. So, um, and, and I'm in like the mid, mid to mid to high 50s uh, synthetics. I'm pushing like 77, which on Ryzen, um, 77 is fine for synthetics. I definitely 80 or less ideally is where you want to be at. So. Um, what, uh, what video card are you running, by the way, Jake? GPU's running a little bit warm. Eh, 56 degrees, nothing crazy. But to follow up while he's responding to what Shadow Hatch says, you know, I, I if you have somebody who, you know, if you're uh, an expert in something, you don't send somebody else to purchase it unless you're purchased online. So, if if for example, if I find a computer for somebody that I can't build them, um, what do you have? Okay, uh, like so. If, if, for example, uh, I, I I'm helping a, a friend of mine, uh, Andy Mellon, with their computer. Um, you know, I'm not gonna send him somewhere to buy it. I'm gonna help him with the purchase. So if your IT guy, quote unquote, and this goes for any kind of situation, if your IT guy says you need to get this, he should either order it for you or go with you because it creates a problem that a he might be wrong and you're you know you want your it guy there to talk to experts or people that know the industry and figure out uh you know is he wrong because i get that a lot in my industry I mean, people are i get people that are wrong all the time um you know people that don't work with what i work with day in and day out on computers people are wrong way too often so you know, I hate it when when husband sends a wife in or wife sends a husband in, or the IT guy sends the, the client in and says, you need to get this. Well, then freaking just order it for him because, <laughs> you know, it just creates drama at the retail level because, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I talk to the guys in my local Best Buy. Um, I know them very well, and most of the guys in the computer department are pretty much... They don't have as much experience as I do just because, you know, they don't have, like, all this money to drop on crap. But when it comes to knowledge and understanding, they're very good. Um, you know, and I, I feel comfortable with sending uh, family to some of those guys um, when it comes to, like, buying a laptop. Because, you know, honestly, you'll find just a good deal on a laptop at, you know, Best Buy as you would even on Newegg in many cases. So... You know, but yeah, I hate that when people send somebody else in to buy something because they, they honestly know for a fact that they're probably wrong and just don't want to deal with it. And I think that's wrong. Okay. Uh, I will follow up that in a second. I was asked to close my door, so I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, looking at a 1050 Ti, not a bad choice. Uh, for what you have, I think that keeps the balance. It's hard to get anything better without having to spend a ludicrous amount of money. So, unless you want to go used, like in a 970 or something like that. Um, yeah, in, unless unless you're getting like a used 970, it's probably not a bad choice. Obviously, you know what your budget is and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my portable AC back on here. Let me know if it gets too. Um, I wouldn't mess with the 1063 gig. 
Um, 1050 Ti, 4 gig I think is po powerful enough. <clears throat> well, I, I, I get that, but what I'm saying is, is if if your IT guy says go and buy this laptop from Best Buy or from a place as a sales department, why are you wasting your time? Say go online and purchase this laptop because I just feel a lot of times that there, a lot of people don't guide their clients appropriately. And, you know, that's, I have a problem with that because it, it, if you're an expert in a field, you should be an expert. And how many times you know, Shadow can attest to it, any of his coworkers at Best Buy, um, that people could send in to purchase something, and it's the wrong product. And, you know, yes, there's no doubt they're going to try to upsell, you know, things, accessories, attachments, warranties. And I'll be honest, I always buy the, the GSP uh, because I can just come in, get a full price gift card, and just buy something completely different. It makes life easier. Um, and I buy a lot of stuff at, you know, local retailers and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I just, I I'm sick of people, you know, sending in clients or sniffing others to buy something because in reality, they're, they're going to hope that they just buy what they tell them to buy, even though it's probably wrong, and then they, they just don't have to deal with it. But then they end up getting their, their, their IT person or sniffing another on the phone and have them argue with the salesperson. And nine out of 10 times, you know, like for example, what I do, so I'm in the phone industry, I don't get paid on what the phone costs. I, 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 what the phone costs is irrelevant to my pay scale, right? So I generally will guide somebody if they don't have an answer the best I possibly can. Um, now, outside of the phone sale, yes, there's definitely a lot of other things we focus on. Keep that in mind. Um, you know, so, so, so that's the problem I have where, you know, so people will advise somebody, somebody that's been a long time iPhone user that likes their iPhone, their IT guy sends them in to buy a, a, uh, a Google Pixel. And that is just an absolutely horrible idea because <laughs> they're used to the iPhone for one. Um, and they're going to get really frustrated. And the thing is, um, you know, then they end up yelling at the associate store saying, you sold me this. Uh, oh, let me switch this over here. I'm sorry. Uh, and it makes the associates look bad because, you know, they were essentially the person that did sell it to them. Even though most scenarios, they're trying to guide them appropriately. Uh, video capture and there we go. So yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, contrary to popular belief, most retail outlets, even even in the cell phone industry, which is what I'm in, um, they don't want to deal with the hassle of upset customers. Um, the, it's just it's just not worth it. So to intentionally guide people inappropriately, and there's one thing to upsell somebody. You know that that's definitely something in sales that you have to do. You have to generate income for your company. You know there's you know to think that you're going to a Best Buy or you know a cell phone store or whatever have you and not have to deal with people trying to upsell your products. It's there, and it's not there just to upsell. It's because they sell a lot of stuff. Like, all the technology that we have in my house with me and my fiance, um, you know, we bought it basically from either the cell phone store that we work at, respectively, or, or um, store that we work at, or bought it online. And it's really, really, really cool stuff. Yeah, I'm dead again. Um, it's just fun. And I think if a lot of people, um, you know, let me cancel this here. If, you know, for example, the Nest. I have the Nest, we have the Hue lights. Um, you know, we have a lot of things we control from our phone, right? Um, a lot of people, I think, would, would like it. Uh, there's a product we sell called the Arlo Go Pro. Um, it is a wireless, completely wireless, um, 4G LTE, three-month-long rechargeable battery camera, okay? And it's great because it doesn't require a Wi-Fi connection. Go or 4G LTE is about a gigabyte a month. 
and sell it to a lot of businesses. And it's not, I'm not there to say, you need to buy this. It's, I find a lot of businesses can benefit from this. They need these cameras where they don't have active Wi-Fi. So that's extremely important because how are you gonna be able to get connection um, and be able to see your cameras of your business without active Wi-Fi or if you have a poor Wi-Fi connection. Um, so that's really all it's about. It, it's about delivering a product that meets your customer's needs. <clears throat> and, and that's what sales actually really is about. No matter what you do, it's about delivering all the products your customers can benefit from. And once you find out what your customers can benefit from, then you work on the pricing structure if it's, if it's feasible. You know, um, you know, it's not, like I said, it's not about just upsell, upsell, upsell. It's, it's about meeting your customers' needs. Um, because, you know, most people that, that have, I, I've worked with that for these cameras, the Arlo Go, um, have absolutely loved them. Uh, they work great. Uh, we can set them up in the store. You mount them anywhere you want. Um, you know, and people are coming and buying more of them. And they're spending more money without them. We only have to, like, upsell them. They try a couple of months, like, wow, this is a great product. We're going to buy more of it. And, and that's kind of what retail, a good salesperson will do. And I feel that my experiences with our local Best Buy where my fiance works, so I get that. Uh, I go when I go to a store such as Lowe's, Home Depot, Best Buy. Um, I'm going there for one reason, and it's because if I know what I need, I'm ordering on some bitch online. Excuse my language. I'm ordering online. Okay. Um, it, so if if I don't have any questions about anything, if I know exactly what I need, I'm going to order online straight up. Why bother? If I have questions, I expect to go to an outlet such as Lowe's, Home Depot, um, you know, Best Buy, Fries, whatever have you, Micro Center, which is definitely a popular one that I go to. And I'm going to ask questions because that's what they're supposed to be there for. They're supposed to be there to answer questions. So, Sorry about the little rant, but I think a lot of people who work in retail can understand that. Um, so for those who just tuned in, you guys have missed it. I will be uploading an official video, but I did do an Adobe Render RX Vega 64 versus GTX 1080 on Adobe. Or excuse me, on Adobe, and I found out some pretty, pretty interesting information. Um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research though. Really, I just got a new helmet, and then I just got an upgraded helmet. Fail. Um. But yeah, I got some really weird results, so I'm gonna have to do more research on it and see what's going on with that. So. Yeah, so um, I had identical results for RX Vega and GTX 1080 on Horizon 7 platform. I moved to an RX 550 and it performed worse. Now, when I did only CPU encoding with the GTX 1080, it performed identical. When I did perform with CPU only encoding on the RX 550, it performed identical to the RX 550. So even though we're not using GPU acceleration, um, it's performing like it is GPU acceleration, which is really weird. So, yeah, it's strange. I have to look a little bit more into it. Ooh, so close. So close, yet so far. Let's see if there's any good. So I'm going to pose it on the LTT forums and see if they have a good answer for it because I am curious. Hey, 339 subscribers. clicky real quick as my fiance would say. Uh, 
dinner bowl and salts. That's a really good question because I actually have to reach out to Adobe to fix that out. RIP headphone users. Oh, there. This is not a good mechanical keyboard. This is some cheap Cola Master Mem mechanical keyboard that was thirty bucks with the mouse. So, uh, real quick, by the way, if you're still here, Jake. Jake from State Farm. Ugh. So, for anybody that's curious, this system is for sale. So I have the, oh, by the way, the, seat, the side panel does not go on correctly with this Kohler installed. I might have to move it to the front, which is fine. I'll probably do that anyhow. Um, maybe I'll do push-pull or whatever, actually. But that's installed. I have a 1060, GTX 1060. E uh, 250 gig SSD over there, two terabyte storage drive, Seasonic M12 II. Uh, I, I don't skip on quality when I sell brand new units. So anyway, it's in the Pittsburgh area. It's looking for a good quality unit. I have it listed as 1050 or best off. Actually, it should be 1200 because I just upgraded the CPU cooler. But whatever. I mean, I just need to get money back for it. So it is what it is. Uh, oops. So I can start working on other projects. I mean. Paying back credit cards? What? Uh, oh, wait. There's something I can do here. But. I like, I like building and selling. The hiring systems don't sell as much, though. So for anybody that says, hey, I want to start selling PCs for profit. There's not much. If I sell, wait, what am I doing? Uh, what switches are it? Okay, it is a mem mechanical key switch. It's not like it's it, it's it's a membrane based key switch designed by Cooler Master that has a mechanical sort of design, to say the least. So there's not actually a right answer for your question, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so let's just say I sell this for $1,200. I will make essentially 150 bucks on it. That, that's it. It's not, it's not a lot of money. Um, but I won't sell it for that much. People are going to try to offer me 1000 and I'll be lucky if I break you. Um, oh, uh, that's right. You have, you have the Razor. And how I know that is I had to leave the software off that computer. So I finally sold that. I lost 50 bucks on it. So, again, getting at the whole, you know, there's not a lot of money to be made in building computers, unfortunately. Wish there was, but. Yeah, I, uh, my favorites are browns. I do have a brown setup, but. Well, Cherry is the manufacturer of it, but they're not the actual switch type. So. But you're learning. All right. Back here. What, what really stinks is most of the questions asked in the LTT forums don't get answered that well. And the reason why is because I would go to say that my knowledge base extends past a vast majority of the people underground. Most of them are younger kids, obviously. Uh, that is Linus's major crowd. 
Um, but it really stinks because since I'm obviously somebody who's pretty done, a, or has done a lot. I don't want to say pretty far advanced, but somebody's done a lot in this realm of work. That there's not a lot of people in the open forum outside of like maybe certain parts of Reddit that might have the answers when I ask them. Yep, Cherry MX Blues, that's correct. Um, okay, so to give you guys a quick rundown, now there's, oh god, here I'll pull this up. <laughs> Mechanical keyboard switches. So, show you guys this real quick. Let me move this over. Let me actually move this up so you guys can see. So this is how a key switch works. Whenever it gets past this point, this is the actuation point is when it registers the click. So ideally you don't have to bottom out, you can stop right here, right? So the switch type is this right here. So this is a Cherry MX Brown. So if you find a keyboard and you take the key cap off, here I'm gonna put my camera back up and I'll make it a little smaller. If you take the key cap off, it'll actually have a brown color to it, right? So there's linear, which is smooth and consistent. So that's gonna be your Cherry MX Browns. That's gonna be your Cherry MX Reds, right? So that's what gamers like, very lightweight usually. You're gonna have tactile bump, which is like the Browns. Browns are very popular because they don't click. You can tell they're good for like gaming type and combo. And then there's clicky, which is your blues, right? So Cherry for the longest time was the most popular. So if you're, you know, looking, wait, yeah, there we go. If you're looking down over here, Okay, so this is the Cherry MX Red, so obviously the red key switch. They have a linear feel, so, you know, very easy to press, no bump, no easily detectable actuation point, very lightweight. Um, gamers love it. Cherry MX Black, same thing, but actuation force is 60 grams versus 45. Heavier to press. Cherry MX Blues, also 60 grams to get over the tactile bump and also makes it click. And then Cherry MX Browns are basically a combination of blue and red. 45 grams of actuation, um, as you'll see down here, yeah, down in there, uh, with a tactile bump and not a click. So that's why a lot of people like them. Uh, then there's Cherry MX Speed. So that's going to be um, very similar to the red, except I want to say the, yeah, the actuation point's higher. So you don't have to press as, as far. Total travel distance is the same. You have Kale and Kale Hua. So you have Kale Red, Kale Black. Um, brown, so these are basically following the traditional um, cherry model. So um, I, think that, I think that is Kale. Razor, they have their own switches. Razor greens are like blues. Uh, razor oranges are gonna be like a, like a, almost like a black. No, they'll be more like a, sorry, a brown, but a heavier brown. Uh, so, they're a little bit, so they're a little bit harder to press. Uh, Razor Mecha Membrane is going to be, I guess, like this said, similar to like a, a brown to a degree. Logitech has a Romer G, uh, slightly tactical, but not clicky. So it's going to be like a, like almost like a brown, but shorter travel distance, shorter actuation point. Uh, still, then there's a lot more. Uh, Toper, um, they have a, a bunch of different ones. Uh, Kohler Master, let me see if they have the mechanical here. Membrane rubber dome, scissor. Okay, so there's a lot to go over, but that's kind of a, a quick and dirty on mechanical keyboards. So. I blot them out all the time. Now here's what I'm going to do here. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to take, oh woo. Let's uh, let's switch that over so you guys. No offense, can't see my stuff. I mean, you guys know my pat, my email address, but at outlook.com. Get signed in here, and then I'm going to resubmit his link. And so the reason why is uh, if you buy, if you go to that link and you purchase anything, not necessarily that thing. Um, I'll 
get a portion from Amazon as a finder's fee. So. Uh, nope, still nothing from the LTT forums. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, I put it in the wrong section. That'd be why. I'll report it. Subform, please. Submit report. So hopefully that'll get to the right spot. What do I use? Um, <laughs> I use I use these. So let me. I'll find them here for you. I can find them here. Ah, there we go. Memcanical. Okay, this is actually the exact one I have. I just got it because it was RGB between you and I. I like the browns the best by far, but the problem is it's blue LEDs and my system's red, so that's why I went with RGB. Yeah, people that, you know, such as uh, what Shadow said, um, you know, people that, that type a lot, browns and blues are more popular because it lets you know, you know, hey, you've hit the actuation point either by a bump or a um, click. And, yep, that's pretty much it. I am looking at chat. Why would you say I'm not... Saturday nights are definitely where it's at when it comes to streaming. Well, so here's the thing. I don't RGB it up like everybody else does. So if you see my system behind me here, right, let me see if I'm pointing right here. Um, oh, no, heads in the way. That system used to be white now it's red I like to be able to change uh, the colors I'm not ignoring you yeah I don't I don't I'm not ignoring you I've answered every question babe I have one of those too by the way crack I think I'm gonna go green for now. With this. Yes, I know I have a big head. Yes, now I look like a warrior. Come out of the roof. Look at this here. Yeah, I know that feeling. some DPS testing, why not? Um, oh, some, some stuff that's coming up, guys. So, I have a Ryzen 7 GTX 1080 system coming in for me to review. Um, I have a uh, $1,300 editing uh, build guide I'm going to do. I'm going to see... Um, well, we don't have the actual Devastator. We have the non-mechanical ones, but it works well. It has a little bit of a bump, but the travel's like three millimeters, I think. So, um, but I'm gonna try to see if I can do. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know really what I want to do. I mean, I've done a lot of build guy or build logs. Maybe I can do an actual like build guide. Um, <clears throat> it's gonna take a lot of time, and the, the time isn't something I have. But I kind of feel like I need to do something on the channel, so.
Oh, wait, I'll have a on here. What do you mean pink has to go? I'm lost. Oh, okay. Picture of recolored tier warrior tier two. It's the wrath system for anybody that's near I think I'm messing on the holy a little bit. Yes, I'll put my hand on the back of the GPU. Come on, bro. Uh, CPU maxed out 62 degrees. Nothing super crazy, of course. Let's go back to unholy. How much longer should I go? Kind of up in the air. I'm tired. I did take my medicine a little while ago. Drank, ate, and drank a fair bit, so. Uh, you don't have a solid state drive, right? That would probably answer that question. Oh, well, that's always nice to get a like. Um, I'm trying to think, Patch. Um, I thought you had a solid state drive. No, you don't. Okay. Um, I'll tell you this. So, there might be an issue with mechanical drives with that because um, I was messing with the computer with a regular hard drive, and boy, that thing was slow. I mean, it was bad. At some point, I know we can't do it now, but at some point we do have to get an SSD into your computer. Maybe when I hit the lottery or something. I'll complain to them and ask them what the hell's going on. I would love to hit the lottery, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, so, there's a lot of causes I believe in, um, and with money, I think I can I can work with a lot of them. So, you know, I'm I'm very um, I, I love doing charity work. I love helping people. I, I would literally just I would spend so much time, I would have a computer business, I'd probably lose a ton of money, but, you know, I, I think that people that are in a position that have a lot of power, or have a lot of money, don't realize they have a lot of power, and they can influence people, and unfortunately, it seems that only the people that have an evil agenda, or an agenda that's not favorable to the economy of the country, or the well-being of its citizens, seem to be the rich people that actually um, voice their opinion and make things happen. Case in point, um, and I know I'm getting a little political here, but 
you know, the dollar doesn't go as far as it used to, you know, back when my parents left high school, they were able to afford a lot more on one, one and a half incomes. I have essentially one and a half incomes and have very, some very similar to their setup, and uh, it's tough. Um, I have a lot of education, a fair bit of experience, but still tough from day to day. I, I think I would use a lot of uh, my time and energy to try to help, um, you know, with the wealth, distribution of wealth, not take money from the rich and get to the poor, but find a way to stop the, uh, basically, the, the, the rich from uh, basically paying lobbyists to pass laws to keep them rich by reducing labor force, redu reducing wages, um, you know, controlling costs by eliminating um, headcount. And what the problem is, what, what a lot of manufacturers and companies don't know is eventually nobody's going to be able to afford any of the products out there. And if nobody can afford these products and nobody has a job, everybody's going to go out of business. So the fight for $15 an hour, the minimum wage fight, right? I don't want to say necessarily back. I mean, you know, I, I get the ideology that, you know, if they make 15 an hour, then other people deserve more, and that's correct. But see, that, that's how they get you down. So we're going to go, oh, go politics, fuck it, whatever. So it's a very, very smart move because the media publicizes the fight for $15 an hour. And then you go to McDonald's and you see people who don't, who, who are there that are past their high school and college years that are lifetime fast food employees, right? And they don't have, in many cases, an education. They may not speak um, with proper grammar. Um, they may mess your food up. And you're going to say, this guy deserves $15 an hour? No, 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 no. My buddy's a paramedic. He makes 10 This guy doesn't turn 15 and that's how they get you. They're smart because they pin the lower middle class against the poor, essentially. So to be brutally honest, technically, any family that's earning less than 100000 is not even considered middle class in today's society. I believe that's the number. And in fact, an um, income with one kid of $50,000 or less, I believe, or $40,000, it's still considered poverty. Um, so just food for thought. So they turn, you know, the people who are trying to make in in world against the poor people while they're just holding the strings. And that's kind of the problem is, you know, and actually I have a chart. Um, let me see if I can find it. I think you guys will find it quite interesting. So it's not, I know it's not saved on this computer. And it's probably not saved in their computer, but it's on my Facebook page. Oh wait, I can't. Uh, I can't pull it up. So I don't have Excel on here. So I'll bring it up at some point. But what this chart represents is basically where the money has has been and where it's going. So when you look at right now. So let me make my thing a little bit bigger. So you have 1974. Okay. So the minimum wage was roughly two dollars an hour. Now it's up to you know seven. What's happened though is the cost went. So you have here you have minimum wage, right? So now the costs are actually up here. So if you would have actually slid both of these correctly you would be around $15 an hour minimum wage, like 14 some change, right? Now, if you go with inflation, the cost would be, you know, here, right? So it wouldn't be up here, it'd be here. So with inflation, minimum wage around $11 an hour. But the problem is, is particularly a lot of important things, day-to-day -day pricing, of uh, a lot of things we have, food, um, college tuition has scaled way past inflation. So what happens is, is, you know, uh, the sad truth is, is a four, uh, type. Uh, okay, I can't type very fast. Um, but what ends up happening is, you know, back in the 70s, a four-year degree would net you close to $10,000 a year. That same degree net you 36. Back then, things were actually close to 10 times cheaper than what they are now. And the problem is, is, is why are people... Um, uh, 
Hold on a second. Why is there an argument going on? Da, da, da. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll address that before I go back to my political rant. Um, Microsoft is making it increasingly difficult to disable updates. Okay. Um, the reason why, and I, I back them to a degree, so I do follow a bit more left than right, because I'll, I'll be brutally honest, not just not targeting you guys, a vast majority of people, users, are not educated users they click and i'll give you an example like people come work all the time yeah no let's not talk about windows vista i have a pop-up i have viruses uh, you know what do i do on your phone you click out of it they're just trying to get you to download something those same users constantly download things they try to fix these they download toolbars and all this anti-spyware stuff that honestly is spyware itself so to force users to download updates it's a necessary evil because people are too ignorant and i'm using this word correctly ignorant to properly protect themselves so much so that technology has to go around and do it when i get a computer or a phone that is three to four major software revisions behind i cringe for example if you're running windows xp you have a problem if you're running windows 7 you could very well have a problem if you're running the original version of Windows 10 because you because you were able to disable it, you have a problem. Guess what? That ransomware attack, you're still vulnerable. Yes, things do break, things do fail, patches change things, but they do fix security issues. If you don't want your shit stolen, if you don't want your identity stolen, if you don't want your credit card stolen, do your freaking updates. Maybe not day one, maybe wait a couple days unless... Here's a critical update, such as a major security issue that they're pit patching. Do your updates. Don't keep your f computer on 24-7 and, and ignore your updates. Do them. Now, people such as myself, I still do my updates, but I don't really necessarily need to. I have a very well-encrypted network in my house. Okay. Um, I do keep a running back of important documents not attached to any online device okay i do actually reload my computer quite often probably once every three to six months so i don't have to keep everything updated but i do because to be honest if things don't work i will figure out a way or roll back the updates if i have to but i'd rather be lazy about it and you know not have to worry about having to figure out workarounds whenever there's a serious issue so What's my build look like? Um, who's? Are you talking me, Crackling, Alley, or Shadow? Um, I keep... I, I have one flash drive with all my important stuff on it. There's not a lot of important stuff on there, though. Yeah, I could probably do that too. So, going back to my whole political stance. So, that's that's the fundamental problem that we have in our society is we have very few people that get to make all decisions. There are people that have a lot of money and how they make decisions is they pay other people or lobbyists to basically pass laws and legislation in their favor to protect them, protect their money, their assets, things of that nature. And that is how we end up where we're at today, which is where the, you know, the, 
the 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 rich, the the people that had a, a lot of money, were only eight percent. They only eight percent of the country's wealth. Now we're around fifty. So fifty cents of every dollar earned is going to somebody who earns more than a million dollars a year. So that's a problem because the issue is is well just get to where they're at. But they are stopping people from getting there by passing legislation and laws that basically control money flow and control who gets it and who doesn't. Case in point, retail sectors are phasing out for favor of online. Jobs are being lost. Sales positions are being lost. Um, okay. Um, so that's kind of where Senator Bernie Sanders, who I believe a fair bit of some of his ideas, uh, I think some of them weren't good in practice, but he had some some good starting points, uh, it comes into play. That we can't have, you know, the Walt, Walt Walton family, the Koch brothers, make being able to basically buy every single law in election and allow them to over or offshore all their workers, import everything, and put thousands of jobs out of business, where are you going to go? Eventually, there's going to be no jobs left. They'll all be outsourced or dropped due to technology. We're going to end up becoming a welfare state where the government's going to have to take care of everybody. And we don't want that. We want people to work. And contrary to popular belief, most people receiving social services. See so yeah, most people receiving social services are not people who refuse to work. Most people are relatively ashamed of receiving it. They go to Walmart at 2 o'clock in the morning so people don't see them because they, they feel horrible for having to rely on social services. Uh, and I know a lot of people that, that have felt that way. So, you know, that, that, that's the thing. So, you know, people need to start realizing that they are worth more. Companies that tell you you can't share your how much you make, they're just trying to make it because if everybody finds out they're not making as much as each other and they're equally qualified, they have to start paying everybody more money or you'll leave. And there's actually not a fireable reason they can fire you for disclosing your income. They can't even put that in a non-compete clause or anything like that when you sign on. That's illegal. So just food for thought. Don't, don't let the man get you down. Realize you're worth something. Work hard. And uh, just keep grinding and you'll do, you'll do well in life. Uh, life will throw you lemons. Karma will be there. But be a good person. Try hard. Help others. And I will tell you this. If you're sincere about everything... Life will take care of you. They'll throw you lemons. And this is kind of my off speech here. They'll throw you lemons, unfortunately. Uh, a lot of, you know, my mother's been battling cancer for several years. And while she's fought hard, uh, we don't know what the long-term outlook is. Um, you know, you do have to take a with the bad. I've learned a lot of good. Um, I've learned a lot of how to be a good person since she was since, since, she's, since she's become sick. I wish I could have learned a lot of that without having her to become sick. Uh, I wish she wasn't, but I'll tell you this. Um, it's made me a tremendously better person with a much different outlook on life. And, you know, just taking the good out of every situation. I'm very grateful that uh, I had the opportunity to change a lot about myself and the way I look at things and the things I do in life because of that. So, um, but yeah, life will throw you lemons, make lemonade. Work hard, do good, help each other out, and have good intentions. And that is my final thoughts for the evening. I think I'll start doing the final thoughts for every live stream. But thank you guys for tuning in to this nearly two-hour live stream that covered a lot of different things. Um, I have more research to do. I got an answer, so I'm not going to publish my results yet. But I did get some answers. Uh, if you guys have any questions, my email, pcbudgetsolutions.com, in the description down below. Amazon affiliate codes, so if you click on them and purchase something during or during that session, it helps me out. I do get money. I can buy more product. That's very helpful. Like the video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Subscribe to the channel. Share with people you think that are helpful. And do not hesitate. Please do not hesitate to leave good, constructive feedback on any of my videos. If they're earlier videos, I'll, I may not take. I may take less grain of salt or more of a grain of salt because I've learned a lot. Um, you know, but definitely, if you think I did something wrong or should change something or recommend something, send it to me. I've made multiple videos and have changed things due to you guys. 
And I, I don't take things to heart as long as you're being sincerely critical and not just a straight up jackass. So that's my only uh, request. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Steve from PC Blender Solutions. And I'll see you guys later on down the road.